All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Chris, the Devil DJ here in Boston. And today we are honored to have uh, another Texan with us out of Austin, Texas, Chris Aduarte and his 15th album. Good afternoon, Chris. How are you today? So nice to be here, Chris. Thank we're, you for having me. We're thrilled to have you, one of the absolute guitar blues masters. So thank you for visiting Don O'Dell's. I always love coming here to Don O'Dell's. I think this is either my fourth or fifth time here playing the show, so I love playing here all the time. Oh, it's a great we're, time. We're, we're honored to have you. Um, your 15th album, mm -hmm. Ain't Given Up, yep. uh, re and I know it's been a while since you had put out a, right. an album, yeah. a very optimistic um, album. Can you can you tell the lyrics? are very very optimistic considering yeah. the world we live in at the moment. Well, you know, I I had worked a lot with my my girlfriend Beth Lee, who's mm -hmm. an accomplished musician there in Austin, Texas, as well. And I play in her band, and we do a lot of Americana, and we used to do country stuff, which I was terrible at country, but it, you know, I kind of learned a few more licks than the three that I knew when I joined her. But uh, yeah, she I've, I've always liked her style and how she writes, and so she sort of got in her head, well, how would Chris write a song like that? And so she'd sort of give me the idea, and I'd sort of, she'd give me like one verse, and I'd finish the verses and stuff. And she's always, she's more euphemistic in her, uh, her lyrics and stuff, and I'm more straight ahead to the point. So it's kind of funny to see the, the dichotomy of differences in the lyrics in the song. But, you know, for me, yes, it's always about optimism and keeping moving forward because this is the life I love to do, and this is what I've always wanted to do, and I feel very grateful I've been doing it. And, you know, I've fought through so many things in my life, so, you know, I'm always going to keep pushing on as far as I go. I mean, I... I, re retirement is not a uh, an option for I me because this is what I this is what I love to You're do. You're living your dream. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. Well, maybe we'll just go very quickly. I know the audience is very interested in, in some of your personal life. We won't spend a whole lot on it, but you you've had a hell of a life. And considering what has happened in your past, look at you now. I mean, uh, recovery and, <laughs> and it, it's it's awesome. I mean, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a great story for people like me. Five years in and others that are watching you you've really done it it's it's awesome well i mean i mean yeah because i was a full-blown heroin junkie for Oof. a long long time ones. i mean me and my wife my first wife we were just yeah. i mean so you know i was i was working for two habits oh boy oh boy <laughs> but i mean you know i mean that's it helped shape me you know some of the things i mean yes i did questionable moral things but you know that's in my past it helped shape me it helped yep. shape me from my moral core that I believe I have now today and that helps me sort of gear my life and sort of keep me going down the straight path, you know, today. And I am working the program too, you know, because I really, I mean, I always preferred AA rooms personally because there was a lot more laughter in those rooms. Yes. Whereas NA, NA was cool, but it, it kind of got dark there sometimes. Yeah, sure. But So I, I just wanted the laughter at AA. So there were many great meetings, you know, that I go to all over the nation when I'm on the road. And then I had my meeting group when I was in Atlanta, the 8111 Club. I had them. They were great and stuff like that. Fantastic. But yeah, I really, I really love it. And I mean, if you keep on the right path and you keep doing the right thing, good things will come to you. Well, I, I, I agree, having been through it. And then I, I hear it in the album. Uh, I think it's some of your best guitar work. And again, like those lyrics, you don't write those type of lyrics unless you're in a relatively good place. I mean, we all have ups and downs, but right. uh, you know, a, a real success story here with Mr. Dorton. Well, that's so. what I want to do. And plus, you know, when Mascot signed me, uh, they wanted me to do a blues album. At the time, I wasn't really into it. And, you know, I was like, eh. I'll, I'll do something. And then the years started piling up, and finally I was like, I'm going to either slip into irrelevancy or I need to get a product out. So I went and did a product. We were looking for Joe Bonamassa to produce it, but Joe Bonamassa was busy, so we found Dennis Herring, which is uh. really who I really would have preferred to have because Dennis Herring did Texas Sugar, and that's what sort of propelled me onto the international stage. And so I'm really happy to work with Dennis again. And plus, it had been 20 years since I'd worked with him. And all the, the, the amount of work he's done since then and all the stories he tells. I mean, Dennis is just the true jewel of the music industry. So Fantastic. it was really great to work Where did with you him. record the album? We recorded the album at Plyer's Studio, I think in Valencia, California, a little okay. north of L.A. Okay. And uh, Jim Scott runs the place. Jim Scott was doing uh, Tom Petty stuff the last 10 years of his life. And so uh, he's got all this great old vintage stuff there, and in the album, we just I just used one amp and one guitar and two pedals. That's it. 
Oh. Yeah, no, I wasn't one of these guys that dragged in 20 guitars and, no, let's use this amp for this tone. I mean, I have done that before, but this time I thought I'd just keep it real simple and raw. And then that's the way Dennis likes it. He records everything, keeps everything. Yes. And and then he'll put together stuff, and he's just got an amazing mind. So it worked out, and it, uh, I think the benefits are speaking for itself. I a lot of positive reviews. And stuff. Good, good. Well, that's... Uh, yeah. And this is your first blues album, and how 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 many? Like A true blues album, yes. It's probably been since probably Texas Sugar. Oh my, okay. <laughs> the first one. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm like kind of like bookended with blues. Yeah. Right now. Well, that's the other great thing about your you don't have one style. You know, you do a little jazz, you do blues, country. I didn't know yeah. about that. I mean, you know, you're you're all over. That's blues master. I mean, I just want to be a guitar player yeah. or a musician. You know, yeah. That's what I want to do. And I just, if, if the music calls for this situation, then I can go into it. That's Fantastic. I well, diversity. That's that's great. Um, one more thing about your 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 uh, childhood. I I understand one of five children raised by uh, your mother. Yeah. And you have sung her praises, which is a wonderful yeah. thing. And you know, she—they bought you the first guitar. And yeah. th th I mean, just in San Antonio. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, can you tell us the story at 16 when you said, "I'm out of here. I'm going to Austin." Yeah. I mean, I was playing the guitar. You know, my brother got his guitar first, and I was p picking it up all the time. My mom said, "We well, might as well get you a guitar." So I got a guitar. And it was a Taka Mini uh, acoustic, an F-140, I believe. And uh, I put electric strings on it so I could play like electric style instead of having those tough nylon, I mean not nylon, but tough medium gauge bronze strings on them. So uh, I, I was playing that and, and then I had, all my friends were talking about Austin at school, in high school. And they said that's a real music town and lots of people are playing music there. And uh, I was just bored with high school. I was in my junior year at the time I was going to Holmes High School in San Antonio. And uh, I was like, I'm, I'm out of here. I know some, a friend of mine that graduated from high school before me. He was a bass player. He knew he had musical knowledge. And I said, I'm going to move up with him. And we just shared an efficiency apartment in Austin. So I moved up there in December 79. And, you know, got a job and then started looking for bands. And I think by the time I was 17, I was in a jazz band. Ah, and awesome. then And then before I was 18, then I got with Bobby Mack and Night Train. That was the book. Yeah, that's what, and that's what sort of oh started boy. me out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Bobby Mack really, like, took me under his wing and said, I want you to learn these solos note for note, Freddie King, yeah. Smith, Super Solo stuff, you know, because... I mean, I was I was wanting to be a jazz, you know, Holdsworth, Demiola, you know, being Coltrane, you know, all that stuff. I was really wanting to be like that, but I mean, I, I dug it, you know. When I first started playing, and I didn't sound like the records, and I, I really worked at it, try to get real sincere and try to, you know, grasp the tonal concepts and stuff. Yeah, and of course, Austin uh, in '79, in the early '80s, really became known as a, as a, a one of many things, but as a blues, blues rock, Texas yeah. rock sort of sound. And you were there for that. Uh, I know you. We talked a little bit about this. Uh, you, you have been compared to, to, in my opinion, the best guitarist ever, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, you probably. Did you play with Stevie? Did no, you, never You did not Stevie. play with Stevie? Never, never got to meet him. Never got to meet him either, no. unfortunately. He, I had he, many times to meet him, but I never got to meet him. Yeah, yeah. What's it like to, because that's a big comparison, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. You've been very humble about it, um, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, I'm, 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 I am a good guitar player. Yeah. And yeah, what is that like for you? What does Steve, that feel like? Stevie's one of my heroes. Yeah. And to be compared to one of my heroes is a great thing. Yeah. You know, but I have confidence in my own ability to you know I am my own musician. But I am I will be shameless in promoting how I have stolen from Stevie. <laughs> As they say, you know, the great ones steal and other just imitate. So that's I mean, Stevie taught me a lot just listening to him and then the few times I did see him in small clubs in Austin, Texas. I mean, just watching him and seeing how he gets around on his guitar and stuff. Yeah, where did you it see him in Austin? Like I Ant saw him in the Ant Continental Ant Club. Oh, of course, yes. Probably, I think it was might have been 1981. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Way I mean, before got, he Yeah, was. I think Oof. it was a, all of an expensive three dollars to get in to oh, see him play you know wow. and we got some for the second set yeah i mean he opened up with uh let the good times roll then he went right into sky is crying and oh. still makes my hair stand up when i think about that version of sky is That's crying a big one yeah, yeah it was great it was intense oh wow that 
a seen them in that small environment, yes, you know, yes. when you're like 20 feet away from them. Yeah, it's pretty having intense. been to the Continental Club to uh, many times, and, yeah. and, and we share a joint friend in, in Eric Tesmer, and yeah, uh, Eric. one of my, my one of my closest friends, and I know you play a lot with him. And yeah, uh, man. Yeah, Eric, what a wonderful man. Eric's a great guy, you know, out of Wisconsin. He yep. you know, moved down to Austin and stuff. He's been following his dreams and doing his thing, and he's doing very well right now, and I'm real happy for him. Oh, I love it. I, I agree. I agree. Well. Um, thank you very much for your time today well, here at pleasure, Don O'Dell's. And thank you. What a wonderful, humble man. And you guys are going to see a ripping guitar tonight, as well as some real good picking, I think. Oh, so it's shucks. going to be really cool. Um, well, thank you again. Thank and you. from Don O'Dell's Legends, uh, the Devil DJ, Chris Crechting says, thank you for watching and enjoy all of the videos that are about to appear of Mr. Chris Duarte. Thank you. Now on to the show. On to the show. <laughs>